The internet loves conspiracy theories. If you click around for too long on Facebook or YouTube, you're bound to find someone spouting some pretty questionable facts and calling people sheeple. This might be a slightly worrying phenomenon, and it's certainly a pretty shady business model. But these are just 4chan commenters and YouTube conspiracy theorists. It's not a major concern, is it? Well, recently, one conspiracy theory has spilt out into the mainstream, garnering significant media attention, being discussed by the president, and even helping Senate candidates get selected. QAnon. In this video, we're going to demystify what the conspiracy theory actually says and discuss its validity. But more importantly, we're also going to discuss how this has become such a mainstream conspiracy theory and how some social platforms like Facebook and YouTube amplify QAnon and other conspiracy theories. Before we get into it, just a quick plea from me. This video is almost certain to get demonetized by YouTube due to the topics that we'll be discussing. So if you want to lend us a hand, then like this video and comment down below to help it get picked up by the algorithm as much as possible. Also, if you want to be sure that you don't miss out on any of our other videos based on any algorithmic funny business, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. That way, you'll be notified every time we post. Now, if you've not watched our stuff before, you might assume based on the channel's name that we like to keep things brief. And while our videos are actually normally over 10 minutes long, we still don't have time to untangle this whole QAnon conspiracy. I mean, look at this. A diagram that links QAnon to Bill Gates via Alex Jones, Antifa, Sandy Hook denialism, CNN, dragon worship in the city of London, and the Egyptian deity of the sun, Ra. So we're just going to super briefly explain QAnon before focusing on how this became a big enough issue for things like this to happen. President Trump tweeting congratulations today to QAnon conspiracy theorist Marjorie Taylor Greene after she won a seat in the House. The president calling Greene a, quote, future Republican star and a real winner. So to keep it incredibly simple, QAnon is a conspiracy theory that started on 4chan with a post from 2017 by a user called Q Clearance Patriot. In this post, entitled Calm Before the Storm, the user claimed to be a high-level insider within the Trump administration, supposedly having Q-level clearance, granting them access to top-secret restricted data. With this information, Q claimed that he'd learned about a secret battle playing out between President Donald Trump and a global paedophile ring. In Q's subsequent nearly 5,000 posts, he lays out the whole story, claiming that a number of high-profile figures are part of this paedophile cabal, including Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, George Soros, Tom Hanks, Ellen DeGeneres, Oprah Winfrey, the Dalai Lama, and even Pope Francis. The claims about these people are pretty wild. Not only do they accuse that these people are part of the paedophile network, but believers also claim that they're cannibals who like to eat children in order to gain life-extending powers from their blood. Now, I hope this goes without saying, but for legal purposes and for the sake of clarity, let me quickly note, there's absolutely no evidence that any of these things are true, likely because they're not true. We're merely explaining what this theory states, and we aren't suggesting that any of this is accurate, or validating the theory in any way. I mean, we all know that it's Botox keeping these people young, not the blood of children, and while a lack of Botox may have left some celebrities desperate to cover up their age during lockdown, I don't think that anyone's reaching for the blood of children in order to bring back their youth. So we know that Q is supposedly a shadowy figure using his White House clearance to shine a light on Trump's work to protect the world from an evil paedophile ring. This might sound slightly familiar, as it plays into the wider narrative surrounding the so-called deep state and Trump's fight to protect America from these underground influences. Regardless, those who buy into this theory see the president as the hero protecting America and the only one capable of keeping the country and the children safe. The QAnon theory even suggests that the president has gone to extreme lengths in order to do this, with Q stating that Trump pretended to cooperate with Russia in the 2016 election in order to instigate an investigation into himself. Then, with the investigation in process, he's said to have worked directly with Robert Mueller on this issue, using the Russia investigation as a cover. Possibly even more extreme is the claim that JFK Jr. faked his own death in order to join the fight against the paedophile ring, and is now posting as QAnon. Yes, both of those are real theories. Q's predictions cover a huge range of topics, from the arrest of Hillary Clinton to a car attack in London. 
In fact, the only thing that's consistent about the predictions is how often they're incorrect. The Daily Dot's list of inaccurate predictions is biblical in length. However, this doesn't seem to be enough to change the minds of his many followers, and the theory continues to proliferate. So we now know what the theory posits, but how does it escape relatively niche message boards and make it into a Trump press conference? Well, it seems this whole phenomenon was able to grow, at least in part, because it came at the right time. Conspiratorialism is growing in the US and around the world, with major politicians and figures validating and even seemingly believing in conspiracy theories. On top of that, more people than ever are getting their news from alternative sources, which can be amazing, especially if you're subscribed to TLDR News, but it can also lead to people believing less than accurate news, which is where the big platforms like Facebook and YouTube really come into play. This whole thing started on 4chan, and while a lot of Q's followers still keep tabs on the theory there, QAnon didn't make it to people like this straight from 4chan, a site which The Guardian describes as lunatic, juvenile, ridiculous and alarming. Instead, the theory began to trickle through the internet and made it to a wider audience via Facebook and YouTube, and both sites certainly didn't slow the dissipation of the conspiracy. Let's start with Facebook, a site which at one point had thousands of QAnon groups sharing the latest information and theories. These groups are particularly important because around the time that the theories were taking off, Facebook significantly changed how groups worked on the platform. In reaction to the 2016 US election and the spread of misinformation through seemingly official news pages, the social giant decided to shift the focus of users' news feeds. So they dialed down the amount of content that came from pages and outside sources and turned up the volume of user-generated content and group activity. They hoped that by pushing groups both algorithmically and through advertising, users would create a community on the platform that would foster genuine social interaction, conversations and knowledge sharing. This might have worked for some, but it also allowed QAnon groups to flourish. With their content often actively being shared with other users, the algorithm thought might be interested. A similar thing happened on YouTube, with users being suggested videos about the theory. This effect, referred to as a rabbit hole of radicalization in a 2019 report, explains how users can fall down a rabbit hole of content and quickly find themselves served more and more extreme content. Essentially, the theory is that if you start on YouTube watching relatively neutral content, then YouTube's suggestions and autoplay features will slowly ratchet up the extremeness of the content until reaching claims of secret government agencies on the left and white supremacy on the right. While this might sound like a conspiracy theory in itself, if accurate, this so-called rabbit hole does make some economic sense. After all, YouTube and Google are essentially advertising brokers, and it's their job to serve adverts to people viewing content. Therefore, the longer they can keep you on the site, the more adverts they can serve you. So when you're done watching a video about the nuances of the GOP's future, they could either serve you another maybe interesting wonky political video, or something a little more eye-catching. When the algorithm's main incentive is to keep eyeballs on the site, it's easy to imagine how they might be incentivized to show increasingly salacious and exciting content. The report I mentioned a moment ago actually rejects the idea that YouTube radicalizes users, but many experts do believe that YouTube's recommendation algorithm can and does lead to users being shown increasingly radical and fringe content, often leading them to discover theories they might never have stumbled upon alone. Now, this whole thing might sound a little crazy and quite interesting. Another example of how social media and online communities have shaped our real-world discourse. But it's also much, much more than that. The FBI have warned that the quantity of conspiracy theory-led domestic terrorism is currently increasing in the US, specifically even mentioning QAnon. A warning which is understandable, considering the impact of QAnon in recent years. From QAnon murders committed in Q's name, or an armed standoff on the Hoover Dam Bridge, to even a QAnon terrorist who was arrested by police while in possession of a car full of knives that he said he was going to use to kill Joe Biden. Some are just as concerned about the president's reaction to these wild theories though. Here's hundreds of retweets of QAnon accounts, and the fact that when asked about it, he chose not to denounce the claims. 
Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much, uh, which I appreciate. But I don't know much about the movement. These are people that don't like seeing what's going on in places like Portland and places like Chicago and New York and other. I've heard these are people that love our country and they just don't like seeing it. They do supposedly like me. Facebook and YouTube are now both working to clamp down on content like this. Facebook recently removed 790 QAnon groups and restricted a further 440 pages and over 10,000 Instagram accounts. While YouTube supposedly has been changing its algorithm to ensure that users aren't presented with misinformation and damaging content. However, it does seem that the platform QAnon was granted by these social media sites has allowed the theory to reach more people than it would have found otherwise. Ultimately then, the wider question isn't about this specific theory, it's about how online platforms should react to conspiracy theories, fake news and disinformation, where the line should be drawn and how people should be connected. But what do you think though? Let us know your thoughts not only on the theory itself, but also on the way it's become so mainstream. What should social networks be doing in order to keep their users safe? And is it really a good idea for the whole world to be connected in the way that social networks idealistically proposed back in the 2000s? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible.